Who wants some free stuff? All right, now that I got your attention, I had no idea they were giving away a Ponagachi today, or not a Ponagachi, a flipper before today. Well, the Ponagachi probably costs more now because uh, have you seen Raspberry Pi prices lately? Oh my gosh, they're ridiculous. So, uh, hi everyone, my name is Ask, AKA Amelia. I'm a member of the SEC DSM community here, and I'm gonna be presenting on the Flipper Zero hardware that recently came out that pretty much everybody in our community is discussing right now. So, uh, we're gonna have standard warnings, a who am I, uh, overview of myself, discuss the Ponagachi and what makes this very different, uh, introduce you to the Flipper Zero and some of its functionalities, how I've used it in my day-to-day -day life, and you might be able to yourself, how you might get one, and what's next. So warning, I wrote this last night. <laughs> oh, don't go through the whole thing. I didn't go that fast, okay. Another warning, tools and techniques shown here are to be used for educational purposes only. Use these tools at your own risk and only on devices that you are authorized to use them on. So a quick hum who am I? Um, my name's Ask, Amelia. I'm a maker, I break things, I hack things. Um, I'm a DEF CON info goon, so if you're at DEF CON, I will be found around the info goon areas. Uh, we'll be wandering a lot this year. I've been doing that for about four years. I also do hardware at the conference and uh, just in general for my day-to-day -day life. I created a thing called the Internet of Batteries with a group of friends of mine. And I joined the cybersecurity community about seven years ago when one of my friends said, hey, I'm going to this thing called DEF CON. You should come with me. And now, now I'm working in computer security. So I worked out pretty well. So the flipper. Isn't it just a Ponagachi, right? No, you're wrong. But, but, but you, would be, you would be wrong if you thought the Ponagachi was similar to the Flipper because some things the Ponagachi has is it's mainly used for war driving, collecting Wi-Fi network names, collecting Bluetooth devices. You can hook it directly up to Weigel Wi-Fi. It's, uh, you can do different kind of penetration tests on it. It's got a built-in platform that you can set it to run deauth attacks, run scans for you know, local devices. You can even uh, write your own applications to profile the devices that you find around you. So if you think you're being followed and you want to do that, that's your prerogative. It also allows encrypted communications from device to device. It's a cute virtual pet. And it runs on the Raspberry Pi platform. I've got one up here that my friend Williams let me borrow because I forgot mine at home. But if you wanted to see it, it's, it's a really small form factor. You can get whatever battery you want for it. But it, in the end of the day, this is a Raspberry Pi. It's got an e-ink screen on it, and it's mainly used for Wi-Fi and BLE type attacks or penetration tests or assessments. Now, the Flipper Zero, what is it? It's not based on the Raspberry Pi. It's uh, based on the STM32. If you know what that is, then maybe you'll be excited. It's a very common chipset if you're working in the embedded space. One of the really cool things that it has is sub gigahertz capabilities. So when you think about that, think about garage door openers, car key fobs, uh, security lights, random IoT devices that might come with their own controller and it's not infrared. Huh, I wonder how that works. Speaking of infrared, it's got an infrared port built right into the, the front of it, which will allow you to control any IR devices. I like to use it to turn off and on TVs because when I tell people what I do for a living, they say, prove it. <laughs> uh, other cool things it'll do, it'll read NFC cards. I'm still working on getting it to emulate those because some of them are encrypted. Uh, it'll do RF. It'll do, uh, it's got an I button. So I don't know if you've seen an I button, but it's actually got a cutout on the bottom with uh, two specific contacts for uh, touching an I button. It's got a very visible screen. So even from the back there, you could probably see this light up. And if you had like a good zoom, you'd be able to focus on it and read it from just about anywhere. It's really readable at night. It's really readable in the direct sunlight. Um, yeah. And it's also got a, an SD card slot on it, which makes it really easy to pull files off. Where's that? Right there on the back here. So what comes on board for hardware? So um, I'm actually gonna show you the menu system here. So one of the really cool things it comes with is this software called QFlipper. And QFlipper allows you to have a remote display just by plugging in your USB-C. So one of the things it has is called a bad USB. It's, it's a ducky script runner. 
So um, much like uh, Dave Bailey, who's one of our members here, his Pico Ducky interpreting Ducky scripts, this will interpret Ducky scripts as well, and you can plug it into your computer as a HID, a human interface device, and it'll act like a keyboard. Um, it's got a UF2 on there, so if you want to store your different UF2 keys on there, go for it. Um, and let's see, where's my... So who's my, who are my makers out there? Who likes to play with relays? Who likes to play with hardware? Who takes way too long to get their Arduino set up just to turn on a GPIO? Uh, so this has built into it a, uh, I gotta look at it, uh, a, a suite of GPIO pins that you can just directly access off the top. And this is a three volt relay that I have for a project that I'm working on. So I'm just gonna quickly show you just how fast you can test a device uh, that just has the three pins set up. So I'm just plugging these into the voltage, into the ground, and now we're going to plug it into the computer so that we can use our awesome screen here and I can show you what I'm doing. And we can go to our GPIO, we can do manual control on it, and now I have PA7 selected, so anytime I hit enter, my relay is turning on now. So any other GPIO device that you had uh, if you wanted to hook it up to here quick, say you're in a store, you're checking something out, you're just wanting to check and see if an LED works, you want to see what color an LED is, really quick, you can just plug it into your GPIO here and go. Uh, as I've mentioned, it also has a universal infrared remote control. So if we go back and look here, you can uh, get a bunch of databases off of the internet. I won't tell you exactly where to go get them, but you, you know how to use the internet. Uh, but you can get a suite of different remotes that will control all sorts of different things. And it's really funny to see what else they control. So like a lot of times I'll say, oh, Samsung TV. This Samsung TV works for Blu-ray players. It'll work for, for like any Samsung device that has an infrared receiver on it ultimately, like um, entertainment centers, have you. I even once, uh, I used this LG one right here, or no, sorry, the Panasonic at a Buffalo Wild Wings and got a 140 inch screen. To, to turn off and on. It was at the, just like, they, they challenged me, the owners did, so I was allowed to. Uh, it also has a Bluetooth remote built into it, so if you wanted to use it as a clicker for, for what I'm doing right now, you can, you can set that up and pair it with your device to do that. So it's got a lot of stuff built right on board. Um, and then, of course, what app, or what system would be incomplete without Snake? So, so if, you, if you don't have internet, but you have your flipper on you, you could get a mean game of snake in. Game over, whatever. And this now has Tetris on it too, I just found. So, so I'm actually not running the official firmware right now, but we'll get to that in a moment. <laughs> so if you think it's missing something, you're like, wait a minute, I want it to do what the Ponegachi does. I thought the Ponegachi was really cool. I wanna do Bluetooth, I wanna do Wi-Fi. Well, they conveniently sell an ESP32 add-on board for $30 that you can get. They have uh, universal prototyping boards that you can buy from their website for about six, seven dollars each. Those are both still available, while the flipper isn't. Uh, there's also a protective case, so you'll see I have an orange case on mine. Some people don't want to put that on theirs. I will mention from personal experience, you need to get screen protectors for these, because in my purse it's already got the screen a little gashed up. So I'm going to be working on making one of those with my uh, drag knife soon. So what is life like with Punwall the Flipper? And the reason I call him Punwall is because every flipper comes with a name built right in, and mine is Punwall. It's one of the best names ever, because I love making puns. So some of the stuff that I do in my day-to-day -day life with Flipper, with Punwall here, is if I want to get into my condominium complex and I don't have my keys, I can go into my 125 kilohertz RFID, I can emulate my door tag, I can boop it, get my access, and get right into my condo. No problem. I'm able to do that with my uh, peers, as, or my friends as well, uh, their, con or their houses as well. So I've already cloned several different apartment complexes that I am authorized to clone the keys for. Being, I'm being very clear here, I was authorized to clone the keys. But I have tested it at several different complexes, and it just for the standard boop NFC or RF tags, no problem at all. Uh, this is using the sub gigahertz module. You can see that it's running at 318 AM. So this is the back gate to my condo complex. So you can see there I hit the button to send the signal, and the gate starts to open for me. 
So if I'm coming home and I don't want to walk all the way around to the front or all the way over to this gate on the side because I'm lazy or I just don't want to open the gate, then uh, I, might, I might do that. Other stuff you can do with it, you can have some fun with Teslas. I don't know where this came from. But if you didn't see that, we'll, uh, we'll do that one more time. I didn't do that. That wasn't me. The other ones were. But, but yeah, the charge port on the Tesla is, is using a unencrypted, non-rolling code, 315 megahertz signal. That is an open band. It is Wild West. Anybody's allowed to be there. And it just pops open the charging port. And there's some fun things about the inside of that charging port. I've been looking at the spec lately. There's a single line CAN line in there. I wonder what you could do with a data line. So maintaining your flipper. So you, you happen to get your hands on one of these. You want to know what to do with it. You don't want to use the stock firmware that comes out of the box because it doesn't do rolling codes. It doesn't do all the different frequencies. It won't let you record in raw mode in sub gigahertz and be able to replay your garage code. So what do you do? Uh, there's a lot of resources on the internet. And one of my favorite ones that I found uh, is called Awesome Flipper Zero. It's just a, a GitHub repository that you could go to. Uh, by this person, DJSIME1. And it's just search awesome flipper and it'll auto populate on GitHub. And it's got a bunch of links to all sorts of resources, resources uh, different databases. Uh, it has the commands for controlling a touch tunes uh, system if you wanted to penetrate and test that. Um, I haven't tested this, but supposedly you can back up and replay your amiibo as well, with, which if you own the amiibo, no problem with that, right? Uh, it'll play, it's got a little speaker in it and it'll play music for you. Uh, and, you know, there's bad USB payloads if you want a suite of ducky scripts. And then as far as, like, how did I get the firmware that I have, I'm running this firmware called Unleashed. Uh, it's one of the most actively maintained repositories besides the official one. You can see that it was forked from the official Flipper Zero firmware. And there's several other ones that are out there that aren't even listed here. I actually heard from some of our other members of our community that a lot of the stuff that's in the Unleashed is actually being pulled from other versions of the firmware out there. So have fun looking for the different firmwares that are out there. And if you find anything cool, definitely let me know, because I'm always looking for new stuff to do with this. Oh, and if you want to 3D print cases, there's cases there, lots of debugging things, um, lots of different notes about how it works. And you can build it from source. They just have a Docker container. So if you have Windows and you don't want to deal with Linux, sometimes you don't want to get out a Linux you know, system to build it on. You can build it in a Docker container on Windows. So how do you get one? I told you about this awesome hacker tool, right? Looks pretty cool. I want one. Oh, cool. I already have one. Awesome. Yes. Well, initially, this was a Kickstarter. Uh, they were $129 each. And that kickstarted just a little over a year and a half, two years ago. It got delayed due to COVID, parts shortages. Finally, we all started getting our, our flippers around Christmas this year. It was a really nice holiday season because everybody who ordered early got them early. And I was just hearing from them, waiting for mine, going to my mailbox every day. Uh, now they have them up for pre-order. They don't have a specific time frame of when they'll be delivered, but they are doing another run, it looks like. They are for sale on eBay. And you can schmooze with friends. And it sounds like. You'll be able to take one home today if you solve the CTF, which I, I don't think anybody solved yet. Has anybody solved the CTF yet? No? Cool. Now, we don't want to do a Turbo Man thing here. It's a voucher for a Flipper Zero, right? Right. It's, yeah, yeah. The movie Jingle All the Way, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's amazing. So what's next? I want to find more things that it can do. I want to figure out how to get it to clone my hotel room key. I was up at a podunk hotel in the middle of Port Townsend, nowhere, uh, Washington State, and their hotel room key was encrypted, and the flipper could read it, but couldn't actually emulate it. So how do I make it emulate that? Why was it able to read it and record it? Uh, amiibo cloning. I haven't actually got that working locally on mine to be able to clone my amiibo set. I want to do that. I want to test rolling codes, see if I can penetration test an old car. This could be useful, like, say, if you had a junkyard and you need to open cars or something and you wanted to just hit all the codes that could go at once. Those are actually called De Bruin codes, if you haven't heard of those. They're, uh, it's, if you've heard of rolling codes, it's basically figuring out how to do every single rolling code in the smallest data packet possible. 
So one of the things you can do in the, in, or the sub gigahertz here if you do the De Bruin codes, they have binary ones and for North Shore Commercial, and each one of these are just every single rolling code possible for that, pro, like, that frequency range, and uh, just smashes them into one like 30 second packet that it just sends all the codes at once. So like if you could bump numbers back up to each other to say, oh yeah, I got this eight digit number and this eight, eight digit number by putting these two eight digit numbers next to each other. Um, we could do global thermonuclear chess. Have you ever seen war games? Uh, and then uh, at DEF CON, uh, me and several of my friends who have flippers are going to be at this thing called the Rent an Assassin Client Acquisition Event on Wednesday night before DEF CON. They actually put up a 15% off code when they found out that I was talking here, so that was pretty cool. So check them out, rentanassassin.com, if you want to have fun with a PBX. So how do you get a hold of me if you want to learn more or want to share with me what you found for your flipper or anything else you think I might find interesting? I'm on Twitter, ask42. Two A's. Uh, GitHub, same. Uh, my email address is only one A, ask.weeding at gmail.com. Uh, of course, I'm on the SecDSM server. I'm a goon on the Discord server. I show up under red. And I got to give a special thanks to DJ Seam1 for this awesome Flipper Zero write up. That's been monumental for me learning this thing. Uh, and thank you to my friend Log uh, for getting me into the Flipper Zero and introducing me to it and really challenging me to do more fun stuff with it. And thank you to everybody else for having me here today and dealing with my last minute presentation. <laughs> Any questions? Favorite features of the non supported firmware that I use? Uh, folder structures. There's actually embedded folders where you can, you can have folders in folders. Heck, you could just have folders in general in the Unleashed version. Uh, there's the uh, additional frequency bands that are available uh, that you are able to read raw and replay. So if you want to do more with that. And uh, rolling codes are unlocked on it as well. So one of the things that it released, like that's locked down on the release is the, the frequency bands that are limited in your region. So if they're shipping it to the United States, they're going to lock it down for what's not allowed in the United States. Same with Europe, same with any other continent that they're shipping it to. But yeah, the, the two favorite things would be the, the expanded sub gigahertz and then the improved uh, UX. Oh, somebody wants to see the lights, huh? <laughs> I almost forgot about that. So one of the other saved things that I have here, so this is an IoT light strip that I have here. So I can turn it on and off. I got this little radio button right here. And so I uh, happened to record that before I came here. And so uh, you can see that uh, I was not the one to press the, the button on this. It was my awesome flipper that did it. Thank you for the reminder. I forgot about that one. Other questions? Unleashed? Yeah, there was one called Muddlebox that I tried. It didn't really have anything extra other than the unlocked codes. I found that Unleashed was a lot more polished. Uh, Muddlebox added extra stuff into the credits for themselves, and I thought that was really, because they like graffitied the entire About Me screen. And yeah, I've only really tried Unleashed lately. Um, that's all I've needed in my life. That actually, that's all I've had time for. No, it is not a fancy Ponagachi. It can be if you want to make it. It would also be a labor-intensive Ponagachi. Cool, well again, my name's Ask. Find me at DEF CON at the info booth if you don't want to wait in the swag line. Uh, otherwise, yeah, see me around here at SecDSM. Thanks, everyone.